Welcome to episode 153 of the Muck Podcast, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hanamia. And I'm Hillary Dockery. Hillary! Hey! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So this is so funny because I was thinking that next week we're going to record two. Yeah. And so Christmas Eve we don't have to record anything. Yes. No work. Um... I'm excited. I am too. Yeah, because that'll be it for the rest of the year for us. Yes, and my brother comes in the next day. Oh, nice. After we record, so I'm nice. excited. My about sister that. comes in that day. So, that day, Saturday, yeah. Yeah, so nice. nice. Yeah, I'll get to see him and. Lovely. On vacation soon. Oh my God, you're so fucking lucky. I actually I was, was saying yesterday, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to ask for the day after Christmas off because yes. it's a Monday. Because usually if it's a Christmas, it's in the middle of the week, at least you get that day off and yes. maybe another day off. Yes. And I don't want to go back to work the day after Christmas, no. right? Right? No, Shouldn't what, I take Monday off? Really, everyone should be. Well, no, isn't it close? Like, don't they do like a, if the holiday falls on a weekend, you get one of the days as Girl, like the I, holiday. I live, I work in the real world, Tina. Uh. <laughs> we work summers. Yeah. Christmas vacation. Oh my god! <laughs> so no, I don't get that day off. I would have to. I think they'd expect me there. I Dang know. It. I know. So many things to talk about. I yesterday was like, there are so many amazing things that have happened. First of all, we have not talked about any of these things. What do you think about Kristen Cinema? I was just that was changing the one to become an independent from the Democratic Party. I think she is a shady, She's, shady, oh, shady girl, shady lady. A shady lady. She is. She and is. I think personally yeah. that she had this probably in the works before her. Yeah, before she waited until after the election. Waited until after the election, and she probably has struck some deals yeah. with Republicans. Mm. You know, because like, it was like we were all excited. And yeah. then she comes out with this. I, I feel like that was a plan, right? Absolutely. I mean, well, just because she I think her election, her, her election's in. I don't 24. think it's this year. It's 24. So yeah. she's got two years yeah. where I, from what I understand, the Democrats in Arizona think she's a major piece of shit. So th- I think she did this too to protect herself. So basically what she did is she pulled the crist. Yeah. What we call it. We call it the Ugh. crist where you change to become independent <laughs> um, to protect, to protect yourself is. and to have power. I mean, but how wild yeah. is that? And, and she's so, it's so funny when I see her for some reason. Mm-hmm. When I hear her or I read about her, I imagine her almost like a Pelosi, like some older person, but she's very young. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah remember some... how excited we were when she was elected? She's this bisexual woman. Yeah. And we were all so excited, and I think she won the cane seat. And, and then she's like, oh, I'm a maverick. Oh, yeah, yeah you're some fucking well, maverick. John McCain never had to change parties, bitch. He just stood for who he was no matter what. Like uh, fuck you, and and, what is her and deal? also, and also, she's gonna said she said she's gonna hang on to her um, her committee seats as a Democrat, which is good for us. Like we need her to, yeah. we need her to. Apparently, I I, I don't know. Oh, it's so fucking insane. And also, like, aren't you? Don't you know we all know what you're doing? Like, I know. aren't it's, you aware I feel like of that? It's so obvious. Yeah, it is obvious. <laughs> she's a fucking traitor. Um, and it's, you know, it's right after that Georgia, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, she did it on purpose. so stupid. And also, no, not one person thought this was good news. Everybody was dragging her. Like, oh, nobody thought yeah. she was great. I don't even know how you walk around anymore and exist because of, of, of this bullshit. Just leave the job. Just and leave the job. Imagine all of the people, because, you know, we do this work here. So imagine all the volunteers, oh, all the clubs yeah. and caucuses, like Dude. all the people that put in time for her yeah. are probably like, you have to be kidding me. When she started it's pulling... It's a betrayal. It totally is. And when she started pulling all that shit she's been doing, the fucking people in Arizona, there was somebody who worked on her campaign and then worked in her office and left her fucking office during uh, like the last two years who was like, she is not who I thought she was. Like that's fucking insane. Yeah. That's insane. And that's, again, like that is feel like you have to be a master manipulator to mm. be able to fool so many people and then you're in office and now your true color show yep isn't that crazy it's creepy also i don't know if you saw this tweet but i've been following maxwell frost very closely oh, i'm can so he interested please come on our show oh i'd love it i bet you he would i think he we gotta know we know somebody who oh knows my somebody. god yeah a hundred percent. Yeah. And um, so he went he tweeted that he went to apply for an apartment in dc and he told the person like I have really bad credit. Like, he's a 20-something-year-old oh. kid. Well, not kid. You know what I mean. He's a kid to me. Yes. And he goes to apply for an apartment. And he's like, I have really bad credit. And the guy's like, don't worry about it. You got it. Gets denied. 
loses his application fee, like <gasps> loses the apartment, can't get the apartment. So he tweets that and he's like, this is real world like stuff. I'm a U.S. house rep now and I still can't get it. Like yeah. I have bad credit because of student loans, whatever, right? So this is, um, what, what are we doing in this Isn't this, this world? crazy? What are we doing? Yeah, it's crazy. But it's a real problem for so many fucking people. So many people. So do you know this chef, Jose Andres? Yeah. Uh, incredible human being. Everybody I think knows who he is. He was doing tons of really great charity yeah, work yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and he was doing free meals. Like oh he's a fuck, he goes to other countries and, and help. He's a phenomenal like angel on earth, you know? He retweeted it and he was like i have an apartment in dc you're more than welcome <gasps> and he's like he goes welcome. What? he's like welcome to dc we're gonna make sure that you're taken care of yeah you're not gonna be without a house in dc like what the fuck and you know what you know what's funny <sighs> and and i think People, our friend i, I think love our this. friend uh nancy fry posted it's it's kind of similar to this like she posted this thing about being a young mother and like mm. bringing your kids and if you want young people in office like here, you gotta have young mothers come with their kids. You yeah. have to have young people be able to, you know, afford a place to live. Like, what are we doing to the young people in this country? Instead of lifting them up and, you know, helping them, you know, continue to grow into great people, it's just like barricade, 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 hoops, 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 hoops. All this stuff to go through. Yeah. To even try to be successful. Yeah. And then you have someone like this guy who, thankfully, because he is a house rep and has a platform was able to get that, but then think about some other kid who's like, wow, I want to go to college in D.C., or, oh, I have this opportunity for a new job in D.C., but I can't get a place anywhere, and now maybe has to turn it down, or, do, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's impacting, well, our, our, and, somebody, that's, and that's our economy, that's our future, like, yeah. there's no thought to that. But even, like, that's why it's so fucked up that, so, the reason why Congress looks the way it does, or even the Florida House and Senate look the way they do, is because wealthy people, like, what I'm saying with the way it looks is white, is yeah. and older, is because people who had full careers and either retired or own their own law firm, they can afford to make, yeah. I think a state house rep here makes 30000 maybe $28,000 right. a year. $28,000 a year. That's not a full-time job, right. but it's a full-time session. Like you're gone. What job allows you to leave for three months to go to Tallahassee? Right. Nothing. So you have to have a certain lifestyle and be able to afford to do of that. Of course. Like I heard Anna Escamani lives in a house with three roommates. One of them I think is her sister. Three, she lives in a house with three roommates. She's working on her, I believe her PhD from fucking UCF mm -hmm. and she's a house rep. That woman never. Can you stopped. imagine? But if we did class with like you go, oh my you show God, up to your so like excited. your like grad class. It's like <laughs> you know, it's it's seven o'clock. You have your coffee. Yeah. You're like, oh, I got this night. You know, because all yeah. the classes are always like seven to ten p.m. <laughs> yes. And you roll in and like there's Anna Eskamani. I'd yeah. be like, oh wait, hey. I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> but can we be partners on every project? <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to be here live. Yeah. Like, I got to go. Yeah. But here's the other thing. But her voice is so fucking important and so yes. needed. And so we can't just have older white people. That's why we're, we are where we are. Yeah. It's because we've had the same representation all the time. And guess what? We you haven't done voices. a great job. Yeah. You haven't yeah. done a great job. This country's we're... in a shit fucking pile. <laughs> but like, we need to have these voices. We need to have women P women of color, black women have to be at the table. Oh I don't know if you saw that. Um, um, Trevor Noah, his, his, oh. his last day, his last show for a daily show. His fucking speech was incredible at the end. In the last few minutes, this is what he said. If you want to know what it's like to live in America, talk to a black woman. Oh. Talk to black women. Because they know that when shit goes bad, it's about to get ten times worse for them. They know. That's why black women show up to vote. Because they know and and get their community out. Thank you in Georgia. Oh my God. The black women who again. did the work again. again. It's the again. black women in those communities, in this community. Go listen to Florida black girls on, on Twitter. Yes. They save their spaces. They have Twitter spaces. Florida black girls just did their last episode. I listened to the whole thing. I think it was like a two hour, two and a half hour thing. And it's all like It's amazing, fucking incredible. Amazing it's fucking women. incredible. And it's amazing Lizzie Pollard, women. Maya Brown, and Jasmine Rogers. And Woo! it was fucking fire. Yeah. And it was their Christmas wish list. And it was all the same things we talk about here, but so much smarter because I can't. <laughs> I'm not articulate at all. I'm not articulate. But so good. And also the, the big difference between our two shows is that I like name names 
and they're very careful for good reason. Well, they all work in those spaces. I get it. But I'm just like, amazing. fire everybody. <laughs> and they're amazing in those spaces. Like They're brilliant. incredible women. Brilliant. So if you want to know at any place, your job, uh, the soccer field where your kids are playing soccer, yeah. wherever it is, if you want to know what's happening in the world, ask a black woman and ask them what we can do to make it better. Because those are the women, those are the folks that actually are on the ground yeah. and are would suffer when COVID hits. They they suffer ten times worse than I would, right? They, yeah. I mean, it's just it's a non, it's a. I don't know. Trevor Noah is fucking brilliant. Oh, Speaking of a, a beautiful so, black woman, Brittany Grenier came home. Yes, thank God. Yes. What do you think about the exchange of these prisoners? Oh, and it's goodness. a it's an arms dealer, the merchant of death. Like, yeah. What do you okay. think about so, that? So I gotta tell you, there there was a conversation about this last night, mm. and my feeling was this is an American. P.S. Period. Period. Yeah. Point. Fucking blank. Me it's too. That's a, how I it's feel. an American. Yeah. This is an American. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Or what you are. Right. This is an American citizen, and we got to do what we can to get an American citizen back. Fucking A. Okay, yes, the person that we traded for is, like, some horrible person. Is he going to stop doing what he does? No, because my father it's asked It's Russia. Him, my father asked him, he goes, he's probably going to go back to his regular job, right, with the arms. I'm like, <laughs> probably, Daddy. That's right, Daddy. Probably, yes, Daddy. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, there are some people who feel like it was... Um, that you, you have to kind of trade in, mm. in I don't want to say, merit's not the word, but I guess in level. Right. Right. I get and, that. And, yeah. and here's this arms dealer, like, and, 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 you know, this is a basketball player. Like, that's, you know, like, you're not trading the same thing. And of course, of course, we're not stupid that that was a deliberate, when they saw that, that, that uh, marijuana or her CBD or whatever the hell she had, her vape, I forget and what oil. it was. The oils. Getting this much oil. Get the fuck um, out of here with this bullshit. When they found whatever, they, they were like, here's our opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. A famous American. Believe me. And now we can use this for leverage. You better that believe. That was it. Absolutely. That was you, the only reason. You better believe so, that this conversation was going on for a year. Oh, absolutely. That the second she was arrested, they said, we know who we're going to ask yes. for. And they have been asking since then. Yes. I guarantee that that's been happening. So, but... So, so my husband and I were talking and he goes, listen, and I said, I said, let me ask you something. If I get arrested, I'm somehow in Russia and I'm thrown in jail, you're going to tell Biden to leave me there. And he goes, yes. Oh, please, please. Yes. He'd he's be leaving, he'd he's be trying, leaving me in jail, people. He'd be pulling the stranger things, coming up from underneath no. the snow in the prison no. yard trying to get you. No. He would. No. He, maybe he wouldn't ask the government, but he'd, be, he'd become <laughs> Rambo. Your husband would become this Rambo man and go said, get And then you. he goes, he goes, and you should tell Biden to leave me there, too, if it was me. Because, okay. Because it's not, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Because it's, he's like, because it's, it's, it's not like a fair trade. He's like, because my life, like, it doesn't matter what. I'm, and I said, but this is, you're did a human you, being. You're an American. Did you imagine? He's breaking rocks over there, and he's like, where's Tina? <laughs> he told me to leave him. I don't know. What, no, wait a minute. Is this equal? I don't know. President yeah. Biden. I don't know. Oh, my God. It's so crazy. But here's the thing, too. I mean, not for nothing. She needed I mean, to by the way, come home. I don't want to hear. And, I, and I, there's a great uh, podcast episode by Jon Stewart. I think I forgot what his podcast is called. I'll look it up right now. But you should go listen to it. There's an episode where they talk to a, basketball, a women's basketball coach coach here in the United States who knows Brittany and has known her for years, The Problem With. It's called The Problem With, with Jon Stewart. Um, it's a fantastic episode, and I learned more about Brittany in that episode than I ever knew about her ever. She's not just a basketball player. Like, I know people are like, we traded just for a about It's She's not. She, how she's about she's an a icon? Human, but how she's about a, she's a human being? And it doesn't matter. Yeah. She could be Joe Schmo, yeah. you know, who, who uh, is doing whatever. And by the way... Don't He's, fucking sit here and judge an people. And don't judge it's people an on this much weed. We need to stop that. Oh my god. We need god. to stop it. Can people, we... it's also, you know, not for nothing, but this much marijuana could save someone's mental health for like a month. You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about how marijuana actually helps people. It's not about it's not dazed and confused. Okay? It's like helping people get through every single day. It is a drug that people use for real to oh. survive. You know? Absolutely. And if this woman who has to go to another country to make a living, which is what they these basketball players have to do. Well, and that's because so know? many people are like, well, why, why was she in Russia anyway? And it's They like, do it all the time. They're not making money that's here. That's right. 
on the off season, they have when they're not and in the WNBA. Not, and they're not making they as travel. much in the WNBA. Yeah. You don't pay them dollar the for dollar NBA. with the men. Am yeah. I right on that? Or w am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. Right? They're, they're not on equal. Uh, girl, please. They're not on equal pay. Please. No, and no one's making LeBron James money. Am I right? Tons. You're absolutely so, right. So, what do you want from people? And this is another thing. And 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 especially you in America, where where we sort of um, we're all about the football and the sports, right? And we don't give a shit about the athletes, right? That are breaking their bodies yeah. to entertain you, right? Because those careers, like even though basketball is not like football. But their knees, their backs, like, it's a lot of wear and tear on a body. Yeah. And you're asking people to do this and you're not paying them enough. Give me a break. She's just trying and to get living. And guess what? That's her job. Yeah. Like, people travel all around the world for any other job. Yep. I'm sure people are going into Russia for whatever tech company they work for. And they're going she's here and they're walked, going there. She's worked all over Europe. It's Give not me even a break, just Russia. I right? mean... Please. Like, that is her career. This is her bread and butter. Like, what? I can't stand people and their judgment. Yeah. And I mean, look, I can be judgy. Well, who cares? I mean, but, everybody can be judgy. But, 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 but that's a matter serious who issue. Sh and who gives a shit? You think that Russia has been dealing in arms for the last, how long this guy's been in prison? Yeah, give me a break. Merchant of death. <laughs> Fuck you. Give me a break. Merchant it's a, of death. And, and the, 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 the That's what the kids call my stare when I stare at them. <laughs> Mommy's mad. Woo. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Okay. okay, here's my other oh, thing. I was going to scream again. I, I I, the Respect for Marriage Act passed. Yes. All right. Now do abortion. Yes. Well, and I also saw now like do, Michelle Rayner's Now do abortion. On, I saw Michelle yeah. Rayner's It's not tweet. really, it doesn't really come here, right. by the way. Like, it's like, not I, real I get thing. it because it's like, it's, it's trying, it's trying. It's jerking off in my face and telling yeah. me to like it. Yeah. Hillary, keep your eyes it's, open while I jerk in your face. Right, and it's and I and but I want to acknowledge that it is these are steps, right? We're taking steps towards what's right. Yeah. Uh, but the fact, the thing that blows my mind is like that we even have to do this, right? Or, that we or, even or, have that we are living in 2022 and we have people in this country. We've already decided. The Supreme Court decided this. Yeah. But but but, but that we're living in this country with people who feel like that their love. Their relationships, their existence is more valid than other people. In twenty, I don't get it. This and should be a non-conversation. We it, should all and be a waste existing. of time. It's a waste of time. A waste of like, what are we doing? Now, now, wait, wait, wait. Let me clarify that. I don't mean a waste of time in that the respect for marriage no, shouldn't be a no, discussion. No, no, it's no. a waste of time. It's like. There's real fucking problems yes. in this country. We That's have real fucking marriage. problems. And what's going to happen now is someone's going to test this law. And it's going to go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. The Supreme Court that we're all fully aware of what exists up there. Yeah. And it's going to get tested. And it doesn't happen in Florida. Yeah. Like, this is so fucked in Florida. Yeah. And I just want... Uh, I want abortion. I want women's lives to be saved. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? Is I, that too much to ask that you fucking respect women and Nancy Pelosi and those other fucking blowhard Democrats want to pat themselves on the back? They will never touch abortion, and the women will women will actually die. It's not about being right. able to say you're married to someone for the rest of your life. Good for you. Right. Who gives and, a fuck? And, Girls are going to be dying in the fucking streets in their bathrooms in alleyways, and you want to talk to me about respect for marriage? I'm sorry. Maybe maybe it's because I'm straight. I I don't understand it. I don't get it. We've already been down this road. The Supreme Court already decided this. Now, what about abortion that they just fucking overturned? What about protecting women and girls and anyone else with a uterus? Do our lives really don't fucking matter? You want a ticker tape fucking parade because you have a respect for marriage act? Fuck you. Fuck you. And, and People are going to fucking die. The whole thing is dumb. Like, and I'm not seeing the respect for marriage. No, I think it's great. Like great. You said, it's baby steps in the right direction. But, but someone like Pelosi, who's going to retire... Ugh. And I feel like, you know, you've had, this has been your whole career. And as a woman, you weren't able to, to touch show. women. Yeah. It's what have you been show. doing for all these years? She's been stumping for fucking Cuellar, yeah. Henry Cuellar in Texas. What have you been doing a for year, all these like years? six months ago. Like, like, this is where, again. They don't have the votes. That's why. Where, they don't yeah, have the votes. They don't have the votes. But two, this is where the Republicans have the long fucking game that they've been playing as they've yeah. shipped away <clears throat> at abortion. And the Democrats have not had any plan to protect. And you're chipping away. Well, we're 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 resealing that hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
nothing to secure it no. so that it doesn't fall apart. They've done nothing. No. Nothing. Until now where it's too late. Yeah. And now it's now it's been all, you know, destroyed. And it's it's a it's um to me, what it feels like the Respect for Marriage Act and the passing and like the patting on the back and Biden's gonna sign it and all that bullshit. And that and that one of those that Collins was standing there that from oh, from fucking God. uh Vermont where the fuck that woman's from yeah. New Hampshire. I hate her. She's fucking Ugh. standing there and I'm like, fuck that bitch too. If you don't have the vote, say you don't have the vote, but stand up for this. Don't give me a fucking brownie. Like it feels like they're just handing you this piece of cake. Right. Like, here, don't you want to eat this? No, I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. Yeah. I, I, and I'm sorry because here's the fucking here's what really fucking pisses me off. The reason they did this is because that douchebag Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas wrote in his answer to when they overturned. The main thing they did was overturn Roe v. Wade, and a little P.S. at the bottom yeah. was, by the way, nobody's marriages are safe, and yeah. that's where the safe right, respect right, for right, marriage right. came from. But the overall picture they're ignoring, not the fucking byline, they're ignoring the headline that Roe v. Wade was overturned and did nothing to save that. They just saved the byline. Where I say, go fuck yourself. Marriage doesn't fucking matter. Sorry, Tina. I have respect for marriage, no, but no, it doesn't no, no. fucking matter at the end of the right. day when people's lives are in line. This, it well, seems like a scale that's very uneven right. to me. And when, also when I'm saying like that this, I'm saying that we are in a, in a time in, in history that this should be automatic. Yeah. The respect for marriage. Like everyone should be able to marry who they, and, and again, this whole, we don't want big government. You do want big government. People should marry who you want to marry Do like. That, that that when I say that shouldn't be an issue, I just mean like, why are we wasting our time on this when it should be a non thing? Everyone get married, love who you want to love, yeah. have the children you want to have, or don't have children. Like, do what you want to do. It's the same. And the government shouldn't be involved. We shouldn't be wasting our time on this, and we should be putting the money and time into things like abortion. It's the same thing where we when Republicans come out when George Bush came out we were leading into the Iraq war and he's like, we need an amendment that's uh, protecting marriages. Right? Yeah. And he was playing to the to the to the base. This is the same thing. Yeah. This is the same thing. Where he wanted to distract us right. with world fucking on fire. gay marriage, trying to ban gay marriage. This is the same thing. You're trying to distract us with bullshit. And I gotta tell you, when you live in Florida, you see through bullshit very clearly. Like there's it's very clear what's what's a political play and what's actually right. meaningful work. Right. And this is a political play. And I don't give a fuck. I don't it's, fucking it's, it's care. A, it's, an, it's, a, it's a headline. You know what I mean? And I work... Listen, we it's, sit on a board of L, an LGBTQ yeah. caucus. And I'm, I'm 100%, you know... No one's going to fucking accuse me of that. Right? I'm not in any way. But I think that there's things that are more important. And saving women and girls' lives. And making sure that they're protected and safe. And their bodies are protected. And being able to make decisions that will affect the rest of their fucking lives. Is important. It's important. And they don't feel safe. And we're in a really bad place. And you want to wave a fucking flag in my face and tell me about marriage. I think it's a fucking horrible distraction. And you all should be ashamed of yourselves. So the other thing that, that I've been seeing in the abortion debate, which I wish we could, I think needs to be amplified more. And I forget what Instagram account that I follow that has been showing. And they show pictures of the embryo. Mm. And they're like, this is, you know, at three weeks. And it's like they have the ruler and it's, it's you know, yeah. like in between two, like, centimeters. It's so tiny. And then they're like, this is at this week. And they go all the way up and it, there's no baby there. You know what I mean? Like, this is the stuff I think that we need to start putting more and more in front of people so that they can go, oh, wait a minute. They're, you know what I mean? Because because on the Republican side, they always stand outside with the little baby picture, like yeah. in the little yeah. little baby in the bubble, and here it is, and it's like blown up, and it's like, oh, it's a baby. It's like, right? Like we need to we need to start reframing it and really like, no, this is science. This is it. This is science. This is reality, and really start because I think when. Because people automatically now think baby, like when I grew up, yeah. it wasn't like that. Like we still talked about, we said fetus or embryo or whatever. And now it's just baby. Like they've removed that language. It's so fucked up. You know? And so we need to take that back or, and showing young people and showing, you know? 
I saw this amazing fucking TikTok of people praying outside of an abortion clinic in, in New York. And there was tons of people, nuns. And this guy walking out with a clipboard, he had a b adoption form. Oh, I saw that. And he goes, here, do you want to sign, do you want to fill out this yeah. application to adopt babies? Do you wanna? And they're like, get out of here. You're yeah. bothering us. He's like, oh, I'm bothering you? <laughs> I'm bothering you? Yeah. He's, I've seen that word. And they've gone to so many different places. Nobody wants to sign up. No. They're all like, well, I had my own children. Like, oh I just can't God. imagine that you have so little to do in your life. Yeah, this so is little to do. It's just like my friend sent me or shared with me this Twitter space that was alpha males talking about how they're alpha and they used to be beta and now they're alpha <laughs> and how they became alpha and how their friends helped them become alpha. Oh. And I thought no to myself, no one likes an alpha male. Uh, yeah, I thought to myself, I'm sorry that no one wants to touch your dick. Yeah, I'm so sorry because if you had friends, family, fun things to do, hobbies, a job, you wouldn't be wondering if I'm an alpha or a beta. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. Here. Same thing with abortion. Yeah. I don't know who's having an abortion. I Who don't cares? really give a fuck. I'm busy. I know. I have things to do. I got a nail appointment at 11 o'clock today. Woo! I don't care about what you're doing. I don't fucking care. Leave people alone. You're too busy involved in people's lives. Why don't you go fuck yourself? I saw the funniest fucking thing today on, on Instagram. It just said, it was from this TV show, What We Do in the Shadows. It's a oh, vampire show. Yeah. And it was just this one vampire and he looked like this. He was like, and oh, at the bottom it says, yes. why don't you just go get fucked? Oh, <laughs> yeah. But I fucking laughed for two minutes. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's what's in my head all the time when I'm staring at people. I'm like, just go get fucked. Oh my Nobody God. cares. Nobody cares. Ugh. The toxic bullshit of these men. Well, in that alpha, ruined well, the world. But it that ruins alpha the world. male stuff is very dangerous because oh, these yeah. are men. Yeah, these are because um, with that guy that recently um, these alpha males are ma are are they're school shooters. Well, they're they're insurrectionists. Well, but I watched a I watched a it was either TikTok or Instagram story or something about this guy who was stalking yeah a woman, and the cops it was their body cam. Mm. And uh, the cops are like, what, what are you doing outside of her office? And he's like, I, I'm just trying to ask her out. And he's like, well, clearly she doesn't. And, and she was gay. Oh, and, no. he, and the cop is like, clearly she doesn't want. And, and he's like, you know, like she doesn't know what she wants. Mm. Like, oh, no, he was filming himself. Oh. And he's just like, like, I need, you know, I need to take charge. Like, basically, like, women... Um, you have to force yourself on mm -hmm, women, like mm -hmm, this rape mm -hmm. idea. It's all about the dicks, it always. Is so, but it's very, very dangerous. Like, yep. This man has not left her alone. And so someone else had posted his footage. They're like, this guy is crazy. Like, where's the restraining order? Like, And he's, he kept going to her apartment, following mm -hmm. her to work. And she's scared. And he thinks that he has a right to her because he's been following around in this alpha male group. And, like, that's what they talk about to these men. Like, we, and because he's like, you know, well, no doesn't really mean no. That's what he said to the cop. Yeah. Like, she's playing a game. Yes. That's what they think. It's but, so but they, fucking but insane. But they believe it. Yeah, no, they, they do. They believe it. They do believe and, it. Oh. And, and I was looking at him. I'm like, my God. Like, how frightening that this is a young girl who's just trying to go to work and live in her apartment. Thank God she lived in an apartment where there's, like, the security guard yes. who can't just go in. This is the, but these are the conversations to have with sons. This is the conversation You're I not have with sons. Anything. Nobody owes you anything. If a girl tells you she's not interested, that's the end. If she go, if you lean in to kiss her and she goes like this, she that's backs it. up. That's the end of it. You, if she doesn't want to go further with whatever sexual stage you're at, that's the end. We don't owe you anything, and it's not about you. They're just done at that right. point. And you have respect for women. Right. It is so fucking and, and insane nobody, to me that this is a thing. And you don't owe yourself to anybody. Like, nope. if you're not ready for anything, like... Yeah. But know. the conversations with boys are very, very important. And yeah. I've said that to my son. Whatever you... Whatever you're behaving with a girl, treat her as if it, that's your sister or your mother. Right. But how you... How would you want to avoid... How would you want yes. a boy to treat your sister? If a boy was doing this to your sister, would you be okay with that? You know? Yeah. Come on. Although he did. We went to this um, movie at his school last thing. We went to this movie at his school last night, and he was telling uh, my daughter on the way there, 
there's this eighth grader there named Papa, Papa and um, I've been telling him about you. I told him how you're really tall and you're smart and you're funny and you're cute. So I think he, I'm gonna, I should introduce you. And, she's, and she was like, what? Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. But how <laughs> There's the singing. I told her she sings the whole fucking time. She doesn't believe me. Or something like that. Or something like that. Um, <laughs> but how fucking cute that he like, like he thinks his sister's so cute or cool that he wants to set her up with somebody. I, I thought that's that was really adorable. sweet. He has, isn't he in um, sixth grade? Yes. And he knows the eighth graders. How oh, cool yeah. is he? Oh, by the way, he just got cast. In <laughs> How this. cool is he? Oh, he, he got is? cast into two things. He's Joseph in the Christmas pageant this oh. year, which is hot. <laughs> and he is, I was like, you're the star. And he goes, mom, the baby Jesus doll is the star. <laughs> so I was like, damn it, Jesus is going to upstage us at Christmas, this son of a bitch. And then um, uh, I'm total stage mom behind scenes. I'm like, where's my son's M&M's? No brown m and um, And then he got cast in there doing a Frozen play for his drama club. <gasps> And he like mumbled through the audition because he's like, I don't want any of the singing parts because they have to do it in front of the school. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want to do that. So he got Sven, which is like that reindeer. Oh, like that's the, cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what he cute. wanted. And I was like, good, good, good. He'll be fine. That sounds fun. Oh, I'm so excited for him. I love all of this. Oh my God. It's going to be a good, it's good. Listen. But I, I, I mean, not for nothing. Sixth grader who knows the eighth grader, that's oh, yeah. a cool ass sixth he's, grader. He's a good case. Because kid. the sixth graders don't know anybody. It's like yeah. freshmen. The freshmen well, don't know fucking, anybody. He loves to go, oh, I don't have any friends. And then we go there last night and, and we're sitting like, on the, on the, my daughter and I are sitting there watching Elf, which by the way, it's such a great movie. Oh, we We're sitting there and this. he's gone. He's running around like, you know, good for him. Oh my God. Good I love for him. him. I love him so what much. What a sweet boy. <laughs> oh my God, I love him so much. These babies. Okay, right, are you we're ready? We're 30 minutes in. This Sorry. is crazy. Listen, right, listen. Am I listen. You either fast forward through this or yeah. no. That's all. Yeah, that's right. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Why don't you just yeah. go get fucked? <laughs> yeah, and after you do that, can you support us on Patreon? Yeah, by the way, can you support us on Patreon? Please. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I don't want to talk to you about that, by the way. I think I, I, think I want to invest in something. I'll let you know. <gasps> Ooh, Let's do it. By the way, we are talking about so many fun things oh that we're doing in the season four yes. of the muck. So we're yes. excited. We'll have to share all that stuff. Maybe we'll share it on our um, year end wrap up. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. I'm first. Okay. Today, I'm. <laughs> 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 this show is canceled. Uh, like, if this was a real show and it was just us putting on it, we would have been canceled a long time ago. Not true. <laughs> they would okay. see this magic. Yeah. Hey. Magic. Hey, magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of magic. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's so I So I got a fake tree for the first time ever. And, uh, you know, I always keep my tree up to, like, April. <laughs> yeah, but, but now, now, now you can. Now you can. <laughs> And Emma's like, you have to get a real tree because you have to collect the needles and you put, like, you can make it put a witch's spell. I'm like, I can do that without fucking needles. I'll give you my needles. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm I'll sweep putting a up. curse on. Uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi's already out, so what yeah. else do I have to wish about? Oh, please, <laughs> <spell Santa's>? out? <laughs> Ooh. <gasps> you know, oh my God. Okay, wait. So you know, like, okay, I'm sorry. I know we're starting a story. But I was just like, oh, DeSantis, Italian, today. You know, lo, lo, well, and then I was like, little factura. So now we yeah. could do a, I wonder if we could do a factura on DeSantis. Yes, we can. Okay. I, I'm assuming that's Italian for spell. It, curse. It's like that. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Like that kind I gotta, of thing? I'm going to ask my aunt, how do you put a factura on somebody? All right, listen. Because I know how you take away a factura, but I don't know how you do a factura. Allegedly. Ooh, allegedly. We're not doing that. We're <laughs> not. Listen, listen, Alleged. listen, listen. If he wakes up and his head decides of a fucking uh, bath like a balloon, don't fucking come looking at us. We had nothing to do with it. Can we make that a shirt? Yeah. <laughs> we're just I, like, on the last we're episode, I called him a doe. <laughs> at the last episode, I called him a doe face motherfucker. And it like totally got lost in the laughs. Like, I was like, that didn't get picked up, but that's, that's who he is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry. Today, I'm covering former U.S. House rep Bob Livingston. Do I know him? God, I, I'm telling you, I searched the name in our okay. list. I don't think I covered it. Okay. Okay. He was born in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and he's a descendant of so many fucking amazing, like, incredible, like, old-timey folks from the beginning of time of the United States. Like, here's the thing. Uh, he's a descendant of the Livingston family of New York, whose members included Philip, a signer of the United States Declaration of Independence, Chancellor Robert R. Livingston, a co-author of the Declaration, and author of the Louisiana Purchase, his brother Edward, uh brother of um, Robert Livingston, Edward, was an aide-de-camp and later Secretary of State to President Andrew Jackson. Wow. Yeah. 
Livingston is a direct descendant of Henry Livingston, who was probably the then anonymous author of the poem The Night Before Christmas. I love that. I read that every year. Yeah. And French Admiral Francois Joseph Paul de Grasse, who together with General George Washington cornered and defeated British General Cornwallis in the siege of Yorktown in Virginia, thereby concluding the American Revolutionary War. Wow. So he's got like crazy blood, right? Yes. Degrassi's daughter, Sylvie, married Henry Walter Livingston, ancestors of the congressman. So that's how they're related. Livingston was married in 1965 to the former Bonnie Robichaud, a native of Raceland uh, in Laforge Parish in Louisiana. So then his wife's family, right? Bonnie's grandfather, Alcide Robichaud, served in the Louisiana State Senate, and her uncle, Philip Robichaud, was Laforge Parish coroner for decades. So wow. long so time basically family. They're big political families. Yes. And that's probably how they hook up, I would imagine. I think so. Okay, so. His father was Roman Catholic, or his father was Roman Catholic, his mother was Episcopalian, and when they divorced, Livingston and his sister were very young, but he was raised first as Roman Catholic and later became Episcopalian, and his wife, uh, returned to his wife's religion, Catholicism, years later. This kind of comes in into play because of things that he does. Okay. Oh. So Livingston has three sons, Robert, Richard, and David, and they adopted a daughter named Susie. Um, he graduated from Tulane University Law School in Louisiana in 1968. Livingston joined the law practice of David C. Treen, who would become Louisiana's first Republican congressman and governor since Reconstruction. Wow. Treen had been an active, remember, because we got Dixie yeah. Cracks. Uh, Treen had been an active Republican in the days when the party barely existed in Louisiana, and this connection allowed Livingston to make valuable contacts in GOP circles. He was a delegate to all Republican conventions between uh, 1976 and 2000. Uh, between 1970 and 1976, Livingston worked for U.S. Attorney, uh, the U.S. Attorney for the U Louisiana's Eastern District. Okay. Okay. So, he resigns his position as head of the State Attorney General's Organized Crime Unit in uh, 1976 uh, when he won, uh, I wish, when he yeah. won the Republican nomination for Louisiana's first congressional di district and company, encompassing roughly half of New Orleans and many of its surrounding suburbs, which is Metairie, which is where I was born. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> the seat which had been trending Republican for some time. At By the way, 1976, that's when my sister was born there. So my parents were living there when this happened. He, he was their rep. When I, he was the rep. This is so he weird. was my rep when I was born. <gasps> God. Bob Livingston, you son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, so the seat which had been trending Republican for some time at the national level ha level had opened up when 36-year incumbent Democrat F. Edward Hebert retired, or Hebert. Livingston narrowly lost to one-term state legislator Richard Tonry of Chalmette in St. Bernard Parish. Livingston was denied victory when a third-party candidate, former 6th six, six District Congressman John Rarick, formerly uh, blah, 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 filled in an independent in the last days of the race. So this independent gets in the race, pulls votes away from Livingston, and he loses, right? Ugh, but these Rarick, stories are annoying. I know. Rarick, who had been one of the most conservative Democrats in Congress during his tenure, siphoned off nearly, or roughly 9% oh. of the votes, enabling Tonry to win with, a, with uh, more votes. Allegations, however, surfaced of uh -oh. tombstone votes, which I looked up and I don't know. I think it means dead, dead people. It has to be dead people. Yeah. They voted for Tonry in both the primary and the general election. So, uh-oh, time to have another election. And he loses his Dem the Dem nomination in August the following year. Livingston wins the Republican primary and then goes on to win the seat with a majority of 51% of the votes cast, becoming the first Republican to represent a significant <gasps> portion of New Orleans oh, no. in Congress since Reconstruction. Oh, shit. So, you know, he probably... Mess that whole thing up. Yeah. In 1978, whoop, whoop, whoop. Hi. He won a full term. He won a full term with 86% of the vote. He was, I, went, oh I wonder God. if my parents voted. I'm going to find <gasps> out if they voted in that election. He this was, is wild. Yeah. There is little Hillary being born, and this guy, <laughs> this guy is like, it's, just, it's weird, like the overlap. Yeah. Okay. First one since Reconstruction. Ooh. Yeah, like, look, you're my born spirit, in some like, stupid Republican medicate. It was all meant to be. I was meant to be sitting here right now. Yeah, that's why you're like, God shit. damn, you got out and you're like, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. A Republican How really... the fuck? <laughs> did you go vote, Mom? What happened? Well, what? Did you what? vote? <laughs> She's still saying it all these years, 44 years later. I'm still screaming at people to vote. 
<laughs> yeah, when you came out, like, the whale wasn't yeah. because, like, the life whale was just, like, a goddamn Republican. Yeah. Instead of them slapping me to make sure I was okay, I slapped them. I put, I put like, a foe across yeah. the faces. And what the, the hell's the matter with the people? Birthing group? How dare you have me be born into this? <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so sorry. many things to complain about. Uh, he was re-elected 11 times, dropping oh. below 80% of the vote only once in 1992. Wow. He was completely unopposed in 86, 96, and 98. His district became even more Republican after the 1980 census when most of the district's share of New Orleans was shifted to the second district. So it's okay, kind of, so, you know, so, New Orleans so, is city. Yeah, so he's, and they're like on the outskirts of the city mm-hmm. of New Orleans. Yeah, but prior to that was all Democrat. But then it just does the, because I'm like, cause remember I'm like, how? Because you said he kind of narrowly won. Seventy six. So, we're talking about civil rights. Yeah. We're talking about all that. Like this is when Repu- D- Dem- Dixiecrats really started going to the Re- Republican Party. Yeah. during that the seventies. Yeah. So it was replaced with some heavily Republican territory in Jefferson Parish. That's okay. where I was born, Jefferson Parish. Although well known in Louisiana, Livingston was a relatively low key congressman for his 18 years in Washington. Oh. However, early in his, in his career, he landed a spot on the powerful Appropriations Committee. Ooh, that's like big the deal. committee to yeah. be on. This, together with his conservative stances on most issues, made him popular with his constituents, most of whom had never been previously represented by a Republican. Okay. Remember? Yeah. Okay. So, he first came to national attention in 95 when he was named chairman of the Appropriations Committee after the Republican takeover of the House. So, we're talking about Gingrich, oh, right? God. The, it, this instantly made him one of the most powerful members in Congress. Oh, so now probably eyes are on him now. Of course. He's like Mr. Low-Key. Yeah, and now, he's been there for 20 years. And now he's in the spotlight. Yeah. Uh-oh. During one committee session, he brandished an alligator skinning knife, a what? bowie knife, and a machete to demonstrate his seriousness... As a budget cutter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a knife. Hey, bruh. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so Louisiana. It's so. I'm gonna cut the budget, yeah. literally, with this fucking knife. Oh Maybe. god, does he speak in one of those like Bayou accents? No, because remember, I don't think so because he's not really from there, right? Oh, like, that's he, right. That's yeah. right. But to like bring it to brandish like. And a, a Bowie knife. Like, that's so weird. But it was a bit... Remember this time, too. Like, go back and listen to the episode um, Patient Zero that we oh. did. It was all about Newt Gingrich. My story was Newt Gingrich. And this is the time when it was, like, theatric. C-SPAN yes. was a thing all of a sudden. Oh, and, and people and, were... And yeah. They were being they're watched. on a show. Yeah, they're being watched on the house floor, like, all the time. There's something in my eyeball. Can you imagine? And so they... So it was always about theatrics and, like, what, what yeah. fucking stupid fucking bullshit. Right. And meanwhile, there's nobody in the house... <laughs> They're just talking. They're just sitting at a podium. He's pulling knives out because, and there's nobody there. And today, though, he wouldn't even be able to walk in with it. Oh no, 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 no! Isn't that funny? It and, is because it's like different time. I mean, it's a long time ago, but it yeah. doesn't feel it was a thirty years yeah, ago. Yeah, ninety-five. It, you know, um, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it's thirty fucking years ago. It's wild. Jesus, what the hell happened to us? Oh, I don't oh, know. Help me. I was born on the bayou, honey. I look good for my age. <laughs> me too. My dewy, fresh skin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we should go to New Orleans. <gasps> so I fun. love New Orleans. Me too. No me love. Too. Me too. Oh, we could go to the voodoo shop. <gasps> yeah, I've been. Oh. And we should go. The yeah. music is so fucking oh good. My God. God damn it. Not oh. e- not not during Mardi Gras. Like no, no, regular no. New Orleans. Yeah, time. I went with my friend um, and at the time my roommate uh, Deborah, and we had so much fun. We stayed in oh. this adorable, you know, one of the little yes. like, old uh, the the houses that they have transformed into like a little B and B. So whatever. cute, so cute. Oh my god, I love it. Okay, so. During the Monica Lewinsky scandals, Livingston was one of many Republicans who demanded President Bill Clinton's resignation and later yeah. impeachment for perjury. Yeah. After Newt Gingrich announced that he would resign as Speaker, in part because of Republican losses in 98 elections and in part because of revelations of an extramarital affair with a congressional employee 23 years his junior, yeah. Majority Leader Dick Armey and Majority Whip Tom DeLay had opted not to contest the Speaker's chair. So neither of them wanted to be the Speaker. Yeah. Livingston subsequently announced that he was not only running for speaker but he had lined up enough support to win oh my god so that's he the was, part i love like yeah. that this sort of i wish i could have more insight into like that behind the scenes yeah. being dealing like i know i'm gonna run for this but i gotta have the people and like what deals did he make what promises were made what was he doing yeah 
Because you have to do that. You can't just yeah. go, oh, I'm running. Like, right. you got to garner that support right. or try to do an upset and people don't know. Like, yeah. that's the part I, like, Ooh, I hate fun. it, yeah. but I love it because yeah. it's just. Me too. It's and so also, if those other two guys drop out, you you got to be, yeah. he's the most, one of the most powerful Republicans. Why yeah. not? So he was nominated as a Republican candidate for speaker without opposition. And as the GOP had retained a narrow majority in the House, this effectively made him speaker-elect. Although the speaker is formally elected by the entire House, in practice, the majority party's candidate is all but assured of the winning vote. Okay, but... Uh-oh. <laughs> in 1998, Hustler magazine publisher Larry <gasps> Flint offered up to, uh, offered up a million dollars for anyone providing tips about unflattering sexual stories regarding members of Congress of high government officials. Now remember, Hi. Flint... Let's was, go. Yeah. I love it. But First they were all, they were on him. That was at the time where it was like yes, uh, what free is speech, it? The Supreme Court. Yeah, but there was also like the 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 what do they call it? It was about like morality, like smut, like or, that kind of thing. Yeah, but they had a thing where it was like the parents and putting the labels. Oh, all oh, that was like happening guys. at the yes, same, yes, same yes, time. Yes, 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 yes. You had Tipper Gore. Yes, right. Yes, Tipper, yes. Tippy Gore, Tipper Gore, whatever. But also remember Larry Flint. He was a, he had, he, first of all, go watch The People versus Larry Flint yeah. with Woody Harrelson. He's incredible in that fucking movie. He's such a good actor. It's such a fucking good movie, but it's, it's, it reminds me a lot of Howard Stern. Howard Stern getting fined by the FEC, yeah. or I'm sorry, the, the FCC, FCC yeah. and he's like, I'm trying to fight for free speech for all of you. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about strippers and yeah. masturbation or whatever, but like, yeah. they shouldn't be telling me what to say and what not to say. And Larry Flint was the same thing. They were trying to uh, uh, keep him from publishing yeah, nudie magazines, yeah, it was, but it was it, like pornographic. But it started like because he he published a story about uh, Falwell. Yes, the Reverend Falwell and how he used to I, I, something about his mother in an outhouse. I, I forgot <laughs> what the whole story was. And Falwell <laughs> lost his fucking mind oh, and had I a lot of powerful that. friends. And so they tried to shut down Hustler magazine, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court for free speech, and he won. Larry well, Flint won the case. It's it is free speech. It is. So now that that had happened, he's like, "Oh fuck y'all!" And then he sees them going after Clinton for like blowjobs, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, "You know what? You fucking hypocritical pieces of shit! I'm gonna fucking put my money out there and I see what what comes this. back." I love this. Oh yeah, and it worked, and it fucking worked. Oh my god, I, I need to find some of these stories, <laughs> dude. It's so good. So Flint was fed up with the attack on Clinton's affairs and felt that most of Congress had had flings and were Everybody like, does. like hypocrisy. Yeah, so it pushed him over the edge, right? And Livingston good. had learned late on the night of December fifteenth, nineteen ninety eight, just days before the full House of Reps was about to begin debating the impeachment of President Clinton that Flint had been in contact with at least one woman with whom he had had an extramarital Ooh, affair. Ooh, let's now, go. Now, this is a guy who walked around with, like, you yeah. know, oh, marriage, yes. blah, 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 going after Clinton, all oh this my shit, God. right? Protect the children from yeah. pornography. Meanwhile, 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 two days later, that's this that's is so fucking, this is so fucking funny. <gasps> two days later, December 17th, 1998, in a closed-door evening conference of his Republican colleagues, House Republican colleagues, Livingston said, quote... <laughs> no, he didn't. Girl, Wait. I have, I very much regret to tell you that I've been flinted! <laughs> <laughs> released a press release saying he was investigating tips about four <laughs> alleged affairs Livingston had had. Two days later, on December 19th, 90, 1998, during the final impeachment debates in the House of Re 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 Representatives, Livingston reiter reiterated his call for Clinton to resign. But on the floor, he says this, quote, if I am willing to heed my own words, he announced that he would not only stand down as Republican candidate for speaker, but he would leave the House as well. He announced that he would resign his seat, quote, approximately six months into the 106th Congress, end quote. So he fucking resigns because he's like, if I'm going to call for Clinton to get well, to go, I, mean, least, I should also do the same thing for myself. I mean, at least, at least, I mean, he, he sounds like a pain in the ass. Totally. But at least that they're, he's being honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He's being so, honest in that moment. Hey. Privately, Livingston told colleagues that he had stopped the speakership. 
um, that if he had sought it, it would be more difficult for the House Republicans to carry out their agenda, right? Like hypocritical. Well, then, well, right? then there's going to be all this news. Yeah. Afterwards. In a subsequent speech, hurriedly written after co- consultation with the White House, Democrat Minority Leader Dick Gephardt of Missouri proclaimed, uh, you know, Democrat said, quote, we need to stop destroying imperfect people at the altar of an unattainable morality, end quote, and praise Livingston and encourage members to applaud him, which they did, giving Louisianians st- standing ovations. Wow. I mean, he's not wrong about this whole, and, and we've talked about this a lot on here. I don't think that there is an, it, not that there's not an issue with people having affairs. People have been having affairs since the beginning, beginning of time. Yeah. The issue becomes when you play morality p- police and you condemn people for actions that you yourself are engaging in, that's where it's a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And, and it's like, how? what kind of balls, again, on these people, that yeah. they think that they can point the finger at someone? You know, um, back when I used to go to church, um, there used to be a, a, a priest, Father Foodie, um, who was at uh, that church forever since mm-hmm. I was a, a kid. And he used to say, when you point a finger at somebody, remember there's three fingers pointing right back at you. Yeah. And I always remembered that. Like, like, you can't judge people because, like, you got to take a look at yourself for a second. And exactly. these fucking people yeah. are, are all, even with all of, like, the restrictions and the FCC and all of that, a lot of the people behind that are people who are doing all the shit that they complain about. Yep. And it's like... Not good. You know, or is it part of that, like, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing, you know? I don't know. I, I, it's a, it doesn't make sense to me. But it's also makes and how you could feel... go so hard. Yeah. Because they go hard. Yeah. Against it's not like they're like oh hey, this guy's a jerk off he had an affair they are they go hard they call for his resignation and all this and they're doing the same thing right. Like, look at it not like, compute in I mean, brain? Look at Gingrich. He was the number one target going or number one person targeting Clinton and yeah. he was over here fucking everybody. <laughs> 23 years younger than him? Oh, it's so pathetic. Oh, it's so pathetic. God, that poor woman. Oh, my God. That fucking uh, giant frog oh, climbing body. on top uh. of you. Like a frog face looking uh. at you. Oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> uh, oh, do I really God. want to be a secretary this badly? No. I mean, my God. No, no, no. I'd rather have uh, old, uh, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> Strong, Strong Thurman grabbing at my tits in the elevator, then fucking having this guy <laughs> humping me from behind me. Yeah, at least put a bag on my head. Oh my you. god! Or no, well, I say put a bag on him, but the, no, we no, gotta no. put the bag on his whole body. That tiny. It no, would have to be like. Do you remember that um that movie uh, Naked Gun where they have sex and they're both in like the full body? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so you don't have to see anything. <laughs> oh my god. That's what I always do. I'm like, do you want me to just cover completely yeah, up? And what do you God. want me to do? Oh, oh please. <laughs> okay, sorry, dude. Okay. Okay, so um, Gephardt, who, Gephardt had previously urged Livingston to reconsider his resignation, having pledged not to make an issue of the extramarital affair if he became speaker. I don't like that either, by the way. Like, fuck that. Following Livingston's announcement of his resignation, House Republicans settled on the Chief Deputy Whip Dennis Hastert to succeed oh, Gingrich no. as Speaker of the House, a decision <laughs> Livingston would later describe in his memoirs published in 2018 as a disaster. Because, <laughs> by the way, go listen to our episode 82 of the oh month where I covered Dennis, Dennis Hastert. He was arrested in a wrestling pedophile scandal. Oh, my God. And at his sentencing, the judge called him, quote, a serial child molester. Oh, God. Yeah. Years later. That was Disgusting. years after he... Because remember, he... He resigned because he was caught up in, he was paying people off to keep him quiet. Yes. And it was found out, like, in his financial documents. And they're like, what is this money for? And then he, it all and came then out. And then I'll explain. Jesus. I imagine years and years and years yeah, and years. Yeah, paying and people years. off. Because of what Jesus. you did when you were a high school uh, wrestling coach. Ugh. Years later, Livingston recalled Has- giving Hassert a, quote, a foot-thick binder, end quote, filled with notes intended to help him become a successful speaker, and quote, and if he had read any part of that thing, I'd be surprised, end quote. <laughs> Livingston resigned from the House on March 1st, 1999, two months into his 13th full term. Wow. Um, but then he becomes a lobbyist, and he resigns from Congress. He still stays in D.C., and... He founds the Livingston Group, which becomes this big lobbying group. Oh, and some yeah. of the noted accomplishes, accomplishments included congressional approval of a Morocco-United States Free Trade Agreement okay. and congressional normalization of relations between the U.S. and Libya following the Libyan abdication of a nuclear technology and settlement okay. of claims by family members for people killed in the Pan Am flight of 103. Oh, so, shit. So, but... Oh, no. 
Some of his other clients included Citigroup, uh, the United States Chamber of Commerce, Verizon Communications. Another important client was the Republic of Turkey, on whose behalf the group lobbied until March 2008. And critics contend that this lobbying was a form of genocide denial, as Turkey does not recognize the slaughter of up to 1.5 million Armenians as a oh, genocide, oh. and does not want the American government to recognize these events as genocide either. So. As a lobbying firm, he's they're almost like a PR firm for Turkey to the United States to be like, hey, yeah. oh my you god, you know. So, so I, I, my one of my neighbors, and he's passed away now, um, was Armenian, and my god, he used to talk about that oh, all the Jesus. time, and he used to talk about how like, like uh, their the money was stripped, or they all had to leave everything, yeah. and their their all of their money, all of their jewelry, all similar to like what happened. Um, to um, the Jews in Nazi Germany, like mm -hmm. everything was taken away, and they came, and they're like, "We're owed." Like yeah. he would talk about that all the time about how, like, and he would, but back then Obama was president, and he was like, "Obama needs to make this right, right. all the time." Oh my god, dude! You know, so and imagine up. like existing and people saying like, "This didn't happen to your people." Yeah, that's kind of like what they were doing. Yeah, they also yeah. represented Egypt until March 2012, acting as a lobbyist for Egypt. Livingston quote helped stall a Senate bill. That called on Egypt to curtail human rights abuses in 2010. Like, oh. come on. But here's the last bit, which I thought was so fascinating. He's still alive. He's still doing this Livingston group, right? He was involved in the Trump-Ukraine scandal. Remember the American ambassador that had been under Obama? Um, oh God, do I have her name here? It was a huge thing. It was part of his impeachment, is that Trump wanted her out. Okay. And they, they they thought it was a Russia thing, like because it was Russia going oh. into Ukraine. And so the re, you, we had an ambassador to Ukraine, the United States ambassador, who was trying to stop all of that from happening. And they were trying. Trump wanted her out, and he basically on a phone call said to fire this ambassador. And he's not allowed to do that. Yeah. Right. And even everybody on the call was like, "This is inappropriate. This is not okay." That's not that the one. Call. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a there was a there was a an, um, an army guy who who testified also and was like, "This is inappropriate." Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. This guy's involved in it, so it emerged as he emerged as a behind the scenes player in the impeachment inquiry against President Trump, apparently having urged a Trump administration official to oust the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. On October 30th, 2019, what? a U.S. State Department employee, Catherine Croft, noted in her opening statement to the congressional committees conducting the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump, quote, During my time at the NSC, I received multiple calls from lobbyist Robert Livingston, who told me that Ambassador Yovanovitch sh could, should be fired. He characterized Ambassador Yovanovitch as a, quote, Obama holdover <gasps> and associated with George Soros. <laughs> It was not clear to me at the time now, at that time or now, at who, whose direction or at what expense Mr. Livingston was seeking the removal of Ambassador Yovanovitch. End quote. Wow, that's so gross. Yeah, but by the way, these ambassadors are usually people who are very have close contacts in the country. Like yeah. they usually do stay under multiple presidents. It's not yeah. a partisan no, kind of thing. No, 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 no. You because know? you can't. I don't think you can like switch out that often. Yeah, you know and what plus I mean? like, she had been not... there for so long that. What was happening there was really important that we had someone there that we could trust and and just understood stand, yes. the, the situation yeah. and the people and have those relationships. Yeah, you can't swap that out every two years, no. every four years. You can't do that, especially when Russia is about to invade the fucking country. Like you can't have that. Wow. So wow. he's still trying to get in there, pull strings. How uh, old must he be? Yeah, he's. Uh, hold on, I'll check. But I mean, he, Jesus. He. I mean, I take can't, a break. Take a break. I can't believe we ha we have not covered him. He's seventy nine. Oh my god! Yeah, she... I know. God. Girl, well, that's Bob Livingston. That's good. Thank you. That thing was at great. the end is it, like the lobbying thing is just that's another thing that interests me. And I know we've talked about it on here before, but I don't think someone as soon as they are out of office should be allowed to lobby. I feel like there should be like some five year restriction. You know what I mean? To stop some of like this wheeling and dealing corrupt shit. I agree. I totally because, agree. Because it's not right. You know, like because they know like, oh, I'll just lobby and they make all this money. And it's disgusting, really. Yeah, it is. And I don't think that they should be um, allowed to do that. There, We have to have some There's kind of There should be a rules, buffer. Yeah, you know? there should be a buffer. Ugh. All right. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Today. Yes. I'm going to tell you the story of former... Florida State <gasps> tax collector and alleged Matt Gates BS. Joel Green. Yes! <laughs> I was like, it's yes! this week. Oh my God, there's so much. Oh my God. There's so much. 
did you read it? Uh, did you see the Orlando Sentinel? Max Scott Maxwell, I think his name is, who wrote oh. an entire fucking piece about how he went after him. Like, Joel Greenberg has been trying to go after these journalists. Yes. yes. Oh, my well, God. Oh, okay. Well, making maybe shit, can, making maybe shit up add, about people. Yes. Holy so, shit, I'm so I fucking hope I got, stoked. I, I hope I got everything. But if I, if, oh. I'm, if there's anything I miss, like, please he, feel free to jump This in. is insane. <gasps> he is such a... He's been torturing people and doing shit oh, for no, fucking he's shady. years. He's shady. He's shady. Holy shit. All right, so Joel Greenberg... Oh. Ran as a Trump-like figure who would stop corruption in Seminole County, Florida. <laughs> but when he misuses funds for a litany of illicit activities, he's taxed with corruption and pays a hefty price. Woo! Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> All right, so our story takes place in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically in Seminole County, Florida, which is it's central and it's it's north of like Orange County where like Orlando, Orlando and all that yeah. is. It's like just north of that. Yeah. Alright, so there was not like a lot I could find about his early, early, early life, but in Adelson and Schmidt's New York Times article, from what I read, he came from an affluent family who mm. owned a bunch of dental offices in Seminole County. Yeah. And he was diagnosed with bipolar as an adult, and he had ADHD and other issues as a child. And um, they say that that kind of led to this struggle with addiction that he had mm. uh, as a young adult. Okay. And the article notes that he started, like, a bunch of business ventures. So I think he's sort of like, hey, this rich kid. And it's like, try this out, try this out, try this out. And nothing, like, kind of yeah. sticks for him. They right. all fail. Right. And so he's like, well, I have nothing else to do. I may as well run, run for office. office. Why not? Yeah. With no experience. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. He has no experience. And he's like attacks it, right? Like, like, and this is the thing. He's like the bad guy from um, Robin Hood. But we share Nottingham. But we've talked about this before on here. Like, how does someone go? Like, I would never in a million years think that I could run for a tax collector. I I don't know anything about the job. Yeah, but you just described why. Because he's this rich fucking kid who just does whatever he wants. Yeah, and he thinks he's one of those like. Beta who thinks he's an alpha, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? He like, was 32 when when he did this. Such a douche. Right? And he's like he just seems like and he's sort of like a Matt Gates, you know? Yeah. Cuz Gates was a rich kid too. So he's yes. like this wayward rich kid yeah. with an ego. Ugh. So of course the two of them would find each other, yeah. you know? So from what I read to Greenberg was married, he had two young children at the time of his arrest. Mm. And prior to his major incidents, plural. Yeah. This guy was engaging in some wacky behavior. So, for example, in an article for the Orlando Sentinel, Martin Comas reported that when Greenberg was in his elected position as a tax collector, he pulled a woman over from his subdivision who was speeding. So this lady's speeding, and that pisses him off, and somehow he feels like he has a right to intervene or chase her down and he's wearing yeah. a badge from the tax collector's office right so it's like his little pretend sheriff's badge yeah and impersonate and, and, yes and pulls this lady over right and he didn't get in trouble though so apparently it's not illegal to do that um but it was labeled quote inappropriate but i'm telling you if uh hillary or i or anyone else uh pulled someone over in our neighborhood, yeah. I'm sure it would not just be seen as inappropriate. It I would mean, go further than that, right? What a fucking lunatic. What a weirdo. He's a weirdo. I mean, he put but, on, he put lights on. Yeah, he... And pulled her over. So, yeah. so and again, like, and then what, what, and also, like, you're pulling over a woman, which I, I feel like women are yeah, already you're probably intimidating. scared, you're intimidating, like, this is messed up, man. And at the time, the chief state attorney, Stacey Straub, Salmons said, quote, I will give Mr. Greenberg the benefit of the doubt and assume that his intentions were pure and that he was trying to slow traffic in an attempt to make his community safer. Why is that his job? Well, she knows, somebody knows her. Somebody he knows right. knows her. Well, he's also this elected, right? So they're all going to, like, protect each other. Dude, so, I got to tell you, when somebody shows you who they are, that's who they are. Yeah. Like that wacko on the school board now who's over there with the gays, oh gays against God. rumors or whatever the fucking Proud Boys on oh the beach. Oh, my God. Fam. Brenda Fam. She, we all know she's fucking anti-LGBTQ. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Same thing How with, do you um, sit on a school board? Yeah. Your job is to protect all the children on right. that school board. Right. All of them. Yeah. All of them. And make their families feel safe to send their children to school. And you have a bigot... Sitting on the school board? Yeah, she's an out, out and out bigot. Out and out bigot. But same thing with this guy. 
And the same thing with, I, I know I told you about that documentary. It was that woman who thought she was, she met some, uh, she had two children. They went missing for, and it was like this national story. Like, where are these two kids? She just ended up, she, oh, she had yeah, the yeah, boyfriend yeah, 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 that yeah. killed him. And she, she thought she was a god and she was religious. But every, and everybody around her knew, her ex-husband knew she was fucking wacky, was telling the police, like, she thinks she's a god. She thinks she's speaking to God. And nobody would listen to her because when they pulled her over, she's this white, pretty blonde woman. <laughs> and when they pulled her and she's like... Oh, you know, we're going through divorce. He's just really upset. And she played it down. And it's because of that kind of shit. Same thing with yeah. this guy. It's like the, you, there's some sort of respectability there. So all of a sudden, things get, they get a pass. Yeah. But yeah. that's the yeah, first yeah, yeah. sign of mental health. It'll, mental, something's there's fucking something off. There's because it's wrong. not normal for someone to pull somebody over. You call the police and let yeah. them do their job. Or you call your if, the, if, the association. If you're, in, yeah, if you're in the subdivision, yeah. you call the security in the subdivision. And let them take care of it. And say, this woman's speeding. Yeah, What's the deal? Get her license plate and say, look, uh, this lady's been speeding four different we times. We don't give people a pass like it's that. Weird. You don't pull somebody over and pretend you're a police officer. That's the first... By the way, that we know of, right? Of many incidents it's where this weird. guy really showed you who he was. It it's shouldn't weird. have gotten as far as Matt Gates. It shouldn't have no, gotten no, that no, far because no, no, no. he goes crazy. This guy, yeah, he's a little weird. So in 2019, he was accused of giving his buddies and pals jobs, about yeah. 3.5 million dollars worth of contracts. In fact, so much for rooting out corruption. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. like that. Like, I'm going to root out money. corruption. I'm Taxpayer gonna, money. I'm going to make things good. And this is what he does. So again, like, I'm surprised that that's not the story. Trust me. They've been writing about this guy for fucking years. So, right? so this is not like not yeah, a shock. It's, it's wild. So Mark Caputo's political article really shines a light on um, Greenberg's character. He writes that Greenberg had employees of the tax collector's office open carry. Like, showing up to a... Because you can't oh just show God. up to, like, a federal building like that and open carry. Well, I mean... We might soon have open carry, but we don't have open carry yet. And that wasn't allowed. He tweeted Islamophobic comments mm -hmm. regularly. Mm -hmm. And he would, uh, this, this is crazy. He had, he set up his home sprinkler system. Did you read about this? No. He set up a home sprinkler system that like you can, you know, like if you have your ring or you could see people like come knocking on your door turn it on. and people who were petitioner who would turn it on and spray them down. What person, like what grown man? He's so inadequate. He's so he 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 just like you he's have a bully. Remote, you have he's a, a remote control bully. sprinkler system that you have so that you can turn it on people who are petitioning, and it's probably like oh they're petitioning for something I don't like, or oh who knows what he thinks they are, right, or what they look like, and he's gonna spray them with water. It is, it's, it's like again. I, Find something to do with yourself. You it, have too much time on your hands. It reminds me of like Get a, a hobby, a, bro. A modern day version. When I was a kid, there was this guy who lived across the street from my grandmother, this Italian guy. Um, and I don't remember his name. But anytime my brother and I would be out front at a certain spot, <laughs> he would turn the hose on and spray us down with water. That's what he would do. And he was like so mean. He was like the mean, cranky neighbor across the street. And yeah. he would spray us with the hose. And so we would always be like, oh, God, he's going to spray us down. And we have to run around some other you place. Got, I, you got, I got to tell you, uh, every single time you talk about, <gasps> and anytime, I, I, anytime oh. you're, when you're, then you start oh talking God. about it, but you're, there's something about your voice changes. It's, it's, you said hose. Yeah. You know, like there's something, something oh, really? changes I, every I, time. I, it's so fucking I think it's like my Pittsburgh, I don't know what comes out, but it, or it's like the hose. Like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> so fucking adorable so this is this is what he did so this but this reminds me of that oh, right yeah. wow. a, but like it's a modern cool. day version of this yeah. it's <laughs> weird on his ring <laughs> like at least <laughs> like at least that guy like you knew he was the cranky old man in the neighborhood he's gonna you know i feel like, like this is what i mean when i feel like when he got 11 years i thought this is all all of things like this yes. have added up to where you're yeah. you know my son's been watching that show the good place like you're not going there like oh, this is yeah. not a good place <laughs> all this little fucking antagonizing bullshit it's all yeah. gonna add up motherfucker all right so i'm doing major incidents yeah but there's a lot because there was like like things so i'm gonna tackle sort of like each of the main things that that he was involved in um and his this activity took place over a three-year period between 2017 and 2020 so I just want to start with the sex trafficking because that's like the like the really big thing mm. that we are hoping will get Matt Gates yeah uh, in a jail cell soon mm. because like, that was the main thing like he was working Ugh. with these people yes and so as far as the sex uh, trafficking um, several women came out talking about these parties uh, that there were young girls and the Venmo payments remember that was a big thing the Venmo 
and whatnot. And Greenberg, um, so what he was doing, like how sort of all of this, I think, came to the surface is he was using the tax collector's office credit card to pay for girls on the Sugar Daddy website. Oh my right? God. So this is oh what he's doing. God. So you know, there are the Venmo payments, but like now he's also using the office. So then when people start looking at that, like now more, t- you know, like. Holy cow. Yeah. That's so insane. Yeah. Think about the arrogance and even that. that you yeah. think you're going to get away with you're it. You're going to pay Sugar Daddy. Oh, Daddy got so sad. Like you know, someone's looking and they're like, "Wait, what?" Oh my God, it's so fucking. Sad. Unless Sugar Daddy, I wonder if SugarDaddies.com is like you know how like some of those like sites that are like oh, we'll be discreet and like it has some random name on like the bill. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that like if yeah. someone looks at your statement, listen. they don't know what you're buying or what you're doing. Uh, so here's, well, you know. here's what just occurred to me though is that um, I, you know you know how I feel I, I, about women and taking taking ownership of their bodies right, and like right, they can right. do, and we've had this discussion right. of like they can do and, I, and I'm still like I don't know about yeah. sex work like I don't know I'm still like right. that but you know These what's so minors. fucking insane it's yeah. minors yeah no listen but what's insane to me is that it, uh, as much as like we sit here and I scream about men and their dicks and how pathetic all of this is because it is pathetic to yeah. me yeah it's also a way of how women are going to take advantage of you right? right like like that's really what this is is it's women they know. taking advantage of your weakness, right? To their to their right. benefit right. To, get, to make money, yeah. which again, there's you. nothing wrong with that. For you. But like, how pathetic is it that you are using your, your work, your work, which is a government job? Yeah. But then to, I'm wondering, I'm on wondering, sugar daddy, right? Think about those words, sugar dad. Like to me, it's so mind blowing to me. Yes. Because it's, it is about again, it comes back to. Wanting, there's something about a younger woman, not the, not, not children. I'm not saying that. No, I'm just no, saying no, like, no. let's say 18 and over. Right, like, right, right, right. Like and there's something so give, fucking yeah. weird about that. It to is. be wanted and desired by a younger woman so badly that you'll pay for it. Right. Because of what it looks like or what it feels like. It's just so bizarre to me. But I wonder if he was using the tax collector's credit card because he didn't want to use his home credit right, card. Right, because he's then married. Because he's married and his like, wife's going to be like, what the hell It's is just this? so fucking weird to me. Yeah. And I think that... I, I don't know. There's so... I, can, I would love to read something about why men and sex and younger women and like, what is this? Yeah. What is it? Is it this need for power or to feel powerful yeah, or, or to look or some way or like... Or, yeah, like... What is it? Yeah. What is it? Isn't there, do, do, I know that there are, there have to be men out there that actually um, appreciate the love and security and faith, faithfulness of a, a woman who's smart and yeah. beautiful and older and, and, yeah. and, and um, loving and kind to you and there's compassion. Please tell me that that's valued and that it's not just about young women and they're, Vaginas, like what the fuck? It's so disappointing. It is it to is. hear, but he's a creep, so okay. He's a creep, but like Jesus Christ, is it really? Are you really that transparent and pathetic? Yeah, it's so fucked up to me. They are. It's so fucked up. It's the whole thing is weird, and so. But on this sugar daddy site, mm. there are girls on there that I think you're supposed to be eighteen. But I think there you are, are girls that are not eighteen. Yeah, who's verifying that? Right. Jesus. So he met you know, uh, a minor online, and he had sex with her on seven occasions, oh. according to the Middle District's U.S. Di- District Attorney's Office. So the reason this went to sex trafficking rather than, say, sex work is because a minor, unlike an adult, cannot consent to these activities. So that's the thing. Even though um, this minor was 17, mm-hmm. right, um, in, in the eyes of the law you still cannot make that decision, right? So that's why this became more, like if she was 18 and older, this probably would have been more of like a sex worker thing. And the trafficking piece also comes in because then he introduced her to other men. So, and she's a minor, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how all of this kind of happened. And (laughs) in addition to that, he also supplied her with drugs Specifically, ecstasy. Jesus. And Maris Badcox Click Orlando article noted that he would even pay her more if she'd take the drug. So he was like, hey, I want you to, you know, I'm paying you to have sex with me, but I'll pay you more if you're on ecstasy while we have sex. You know, so like, 
That's messed up too. It because and it takes away any sort of like maybe power she has because who, yeah. who knows how you what, how you behave. Yeah. 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 So it's, I feel like it's just so gross. And he tried to hide his payments. Such a bad guy. As, quote, school-related expenses, <sighs> according to the article. Oh, my God. Isn't that gross? He's so fucking Isn't gross. Isn't that gross? So in the end, he spent about $70,000 <gasps> for women in about two years. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! $70,000. Oh, my God! Can you imagine this? All right. But also when you look at that, seventy thousand dollars for for fucking yeah. So someone would do something with your penis. You paid seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Yes, and it's you so have, fucked up. And it's like you you are married. You have a wife at home that I'm sure that you know you have two kids. So you but have, wait a minute, could you imagine ever paying? Seventy thousand dollars for, for, for a, a dude to have no. sex with you. This is no. what I mean. No. By the way, I guarantee he's not. No. It's not that he's, and he's not even like an old, gross man. He's he's not, he's not. He's not. He's, he's not. I mean, he's not my type, but he's not ugly. Like he could pull some if he tried, but he doesn't even want to do that. Well, like, probably, you don't have to. Pay, you can cheat married, on your wife and yeah. not spend seventy thousand right. fucking dollars. But he wants it to be discreet, and he wants to party, and he... So what I write to you about him... But he doesn't even want a woman. That's right, what's fucking right. weird, too. But, but he doesn't the, really want a woman. But the other thing is he wanted to kind of, like, hobnob with these folks, right? And, like, wanted to sort of be accepted and in these inner circles. So I think that's part of it, too. Like, oh, look, I'm bringing ladies. Oh, look, I'm bringing the drug. You know what I mean? Oh, like, my God. I think there's something So basically, there. but they're going to view you as a pimp Allegedly. instead of... They're going to view you as a pimp instead of, like, an upstanding, yeah. like... What are you doing? Get yeah. your fucking shit together. <laughs> All right, so the Matt Gates connection here is that according to Christy Zizzo's Click Orlando article, Greenberg claimed that Gates gave him money to pay for the minor and that Gates allegedly may have been involved in a trip to the Bahamas, which we've heard about before, with sex workers. Oh the problem in the Gates Clay case is that the woman involved says that she was not coerced, but as I noted earlier, you can't make that consent. So I guess we have to see how this is going to pan out for him because she was like 17, almost 18. But you're also leaving the you state. Know. You're leaving. Yeah, so... All right, so the other charges that were sur like surrounding Greenberg was this stalking charge. Mm. And so, hey, this guy's something else. Jesus. So aside from the uh, sex trafficking, which really got a lot of the news coverage, and rightfully so, yeah. I sort of was like, oh, I didn't know about this other thing that was happening. So he was accused of stalking. And now when I first saw this, I assumed that he was stalking a woman or one of the girls, but that was not it. This guy was just an asshole. Mm. And according to Marshall Cohen's CNN article, when he was running for re-election for tax collector of Seminole County in 2020, an educator ran against him. So he decided right. to try and destroy this guy's reputation. Yes, yes, yes. He wrote letters to the teacher's school accusing him of sexual misconduct, like from like a position of someone that has been abused by him. Yep. And like these other letters and letters accusing him of racism. He even created a fake social media account under that person's name to try and create this false image. Like, who does that? Like, he, he putting this guy's picture up there, like, writing stuff as if it's him yep. to try to discredit his reputation. Yep. What are you doing? I know. What are you doing? And by the way, that was part of that article that I read. Yeah, and this guy, weird. I don't know if you have a quote for him or anything from the, from the teacher, but, like, his wife and his children were affected by this. Like, it was going around where his people were looking at his wife as if her husband was it's having his, sex yes, with a student. Yes, Like, it would made them no, all, like, he like, had to fight for his reputation. Yes. I mean, and something like that, for a teacher to be accused yeah. of that. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. It is horrible. Especially if it's a man horrible. with a girl. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, that is your, and, and again, like, people don't understand, like, when you're a teacher, that's your career, Right. And, and if you're fired from a school in a county, it's not like you're an accountant and you get fired from some firm and now you can go to another firm where you live and right. apply for a job. The county is all the teaching jobs, right? So now, like, you have to move to an entirely different county if you want to have a teaching job somewhere. Like, it's not like... You know, people are like, well, just go to another school. Like, that's not how it works. It's You're connected to the larger county. Like... And the reason, the other thing is that the reason the teacher ran is because he had read 
article after article after about article about Greenberg and yeah. how terrible he was, yeah. all these awful things, and he's like, somebody needs to get this guy out of office, and right. that's why he ran, because of Greenberg being so fucking bad. And but he didn't realize what could happen to him if right. that happened, is that you're going against a monster, he's going to behave like a monster. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, uh, Greenberg, you were the one trafficking minors, and you're Ooh. sending letters about misconduct yeah. with minors. Ooh. What? It's just like that other story. Like, you're going to sit there and make these accusa accusations. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, Cohen wrote that Greenberg did apologize later, like, <gasps> during the trial. Give me a break. Um, and that the teacher accepted the apology, which is more than what Greenberg deserves, because I would not accept the apology. I'd be like, okay, you said your apology. I don't have to accept it. He called that Scott Maxwell article that he wrote, that this recent one, he, he said that Greenberg called him and apologized too. And Greenberg's like, your apology should be out, you out here, stop lying. Like, stop lying to our telling the truth. He never fucking heard from him again. Yeah. So like, give me a break. Yeah. So he also had bribery charges. And this was because he bribed a federal, a, like a federal official from the Small Business Administration and basically got $430,000 in COVID-19 funds. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah. Like, all this stuff, like, because everyone was focused on Gates and, like, the, the Venmo and all the parties and all of that, that I was like, oh, whoa, what? This I guy was, like, was, doing a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I knew there was a lot of stuff. So, um, the mm. misappropriation of funds, um, as a tax collector, right, he took hundreds of thousands of dollars of our tax money to buy... Cryptocurrency. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Basically, it was to mine crypto, start a business that sold crypto, and buy crypto mining machines. Such like, a frat boy. I don't understand. I still yeah. don't understand crypto. No, me okay, I like, tried. I tried. And I number tried. one, like, is it a thing anymore? Because no. didn't something happen yes. that it's like no, a mess? No, one of these companies blew up. Crypto but is not real. NFTs are not real. Stop Stop Listen, doing this. Stop making me try to When I think of crypto, this is this. what I think of. Uh, I was at a gas station the other day. <sighs> And there was a sign that said, buy Bitcoin here. You know what I mean? That alone tells you that it's shady, right? Oh, my God. Like, I was watching it. something. I'm going to go around and get my Mad Dog 2020, yeah. some rolling papers, and Bitcoin. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. P.S. So, that's what I just, this just reminded me of something. The video I was talking about earlier where the guy oh was, like, God. signing these adoption papers at the abortion, like, prayer circles yeah. or whatever. He's like, sign these. He was wearing a baseball hat. It said Bitcoin on it. And I was like, well... <laughs> I mean, I love this video, but God oh damn it, what God. is with you in this These Bitcoin? Bitcoin? It's so stupid. It's <laughs> so dumb. This is, listen, the safest thing you could ever do is put your money, if yeah. you're scared, just put, put it, it in the mattress yes. and walk away from it. Don't fucking get mm -hmm. into Bitcoin. Yeah. That's what they, I, apparently at Art Basel, yeah. put it in the wall, put it in the attic. Uh, don't bury it underground. Apparently, but at Art Basel, underground, you got to put it in the glass jars. Yeah. Apparently, at Art <laughs> Basel, there was uh, like on the walls, there was like this is an NFT piece of art, and like people were like trying to buy. I don't understand it. All I, I know either. is it's I not a real thing. Yeah, it's not. I thought we need an NFT. If, if, if it's own. not in my hand, it doesn't exist. If the cash isn't yes. in my hand or in my bank account, like it doesn't fucking exist to me. One of our producers mentioned that we should have an NFT for the podcast. One of? I thought, how many producers do we have? Well, we have our executive producer, but then we have our other No, producer. I told that other producer, <laughs> cut the shit, and he's downgraded to engineer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Until further notice. Oh. <laughs> Our other producer. <laughs> you the cat that's up there? That cat? How many, oh producers, my how many producers, by the way, he said to me one time, <laughs> oh, how does Alfredo get all these guests? I go, no, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Alfredo is just, it's a title that's for fun. How does Alfredo get oh, all these guests? That's so cute. Adorable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fredo. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so yeah, another thing that he was involved in was this fake ID issue. So according to court documents, oh my God, this is just a fucking. He's like a he's like a teenage this idiot. Is two years. He's like a college idiot. Crypto, years. crypto, fake yeah. IDs. Well, yeah, when he has daddy. To, he's got to go buy the Mad Dog Twenty Twenty yeah. and the Bitcoin. So he needs a fake ID to go. Is to he the, drinking the Bartles and James uh, on the foot in a paper bag somewhere, like in a parking lot with his friend? Oh my God, you fucking loser. So the tax collector's office would take surrendered IDs. So like when people have to surrender oh their my ID, God. he would have to take them and they shred them, right? But Greenberg, would, he, would take, do it. Yeah, he would take some of those IDs, <laughs> and instead of shredding them, this office. he would access this database, right? And he would create a new ID with the person's name but his face. Oh, my right? God. And what he would use fuck? those IDs to, quote, 
facilitate his efforts to engage in commercial sex acts. <gasps> so like when he's like, hey, so that it's not Greenberg, right? Like, oh my god, that, this is to so try to like, hi, you know, try to hide who this he is. This is so fucked up. And look um, how far he's going for pussy. This is yes, fucking crazy. Yes. Well, and the other thing that he was doing is he also looked up the girls in the database <gasps> to find out information. Like where they live, like private information. But however, then you would see that that's a minor, right? Ooh. Then you would know that that person is an 18, right? Ooh. So oh I feel like, so God. now you know. Now you can't say, oh, I didn't oh, know. He doesn't care. Oh, he he's, doesn't care. you know what I mean? Because now they have evidence that you've accessed information on this them. This is so fucked up, dude. It's weird. It's so fucked up. So, um, property fraud. He was involved in a scheme that led to $12 million in property fraud. Oh, my and God. So the, the, he got ele- only got 11 years? Yeah. So other people were involved in that scheme, and they're, like, being, they're still, like, being charged and sentenced and stuff. Um, I, I just, the wildest thing to me is that this occurred in such a tiny window. You know, he's elected yeah. in 2016. Yeah. And he's arrested in 2020. You know, like, that's, like... And then you're in office well, twenty seven. This is like three this is, years. But this is also a perfect example of like when we always go like, were they good when they went in or were they bad when they got oh, elected? No. Like, no, he was bad he when was he got elected, over. and it was just like what, trying to find one thing after the other. Here's the fucking crazy part too, is that he he starts talking. Yes, right? like he's yes. not going to sit there and go, it was just me. No, no. This is the kind of guy who opens his mouth and says, I'm going to do. Sing. Yeah, that's I'm why save he got him. eleven years. Yeah, probably because yeah. he fucking opened his mouth and started to sing. Yeah. Woo! Oh, God. All right, so the charges. Originally, Greenberg faced 33 different counts. Oh and God. at first, he pled not guilty. But then he changed that plea in exchange for a deal. And that plea reduced the charges to six. So he oh went my from 33 God. counts to six. <laughs> what did he tell yeah. them? I'm dying I, I want to see. know so bad. So oh. according to CNN's Marshall Cohen's article, the charges included underage... Uh, sex trafficking, Jeez. wire fraud, stalking, identity theft, making a fake ID, and conspiracy to defraud the U.S. The district judge, Gregory Presnell, noted, quote, I have never seen a defendant who has committed so many different types of crimes in such a relatively short period. And he also called Greenberg's actions, quote, downright evil. Mm. So he ultimately took a plea deal and famously, right, cooperated with the feds, which is what we're all still like, at least in Florida, I feel like we're just, I'm waiting yeah. for the shoe to drop on that case. Like yeah. I'm waiting. I just, I cannot wait years, to see right? what happens. And every time I see that hooded brow and his eyes and that <laughs> Giant face, forehead. I'm like, please send this man to jail. Please. He's so creepy. Here's the greatest thing about Matt Gates. He's engaged. Ugh. Oh, God, that Who's woman. this dummy? Jesus, girl, you run. dummy. Run for the hills, what girl. What is wrong with you? Run for the hills. This guy's no bueno, man. God. Could you imagine? You, he's already been ac- accused of all these things, and then you get engaged? And then you get engaged. Like, what does she get? Like, did he pay her? Like, is this, ugh. All right, so, sentencing. I waited forever. So, he was on my list, and, like, because I oh. like to wait for the sentencing, because yeah. then I'm like, it's oh, all I'm wrapped so up in, like, this. a pretty little bow. Yeah, I love it. And we did mention it last week on the show, but yeah. like, yeah. whatever. Okay, so, so he got 11 years. He will have 10 years of supervised release after his jail time. He will have to register as a sex offender, but the judge noted he will not be labeled as a pedophile because the girl involved was, quote, nearly 18. All right, all right. He had to pay $1.3 million <clears throat> to make up the money he stole. And misused from his office. Wow. And another account from WESH2 reported that it was actually $1.8 million. So either way, he's paying over a million dollars back. And Greenberg uh, had this to say after sentencing, quote, Nothing that I say today could justify my actions. I feel such remorse for what I've done. And he also noted, quote, I can never make up for what I've done. Mm. So the aftermath, so some personal aftermath stuff, his wife divorced him. Okay, good, good, So he loses his wife and kids. Good. His parents, those rich real estate folks, cut him out of the will. You're kidding. Bye. Like, you're I thought that maybe they'd pay that money for him. No, 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 no. He has to sell. He sold everything. Wow. Sold everything. His family, like, cut him out. He's done. So he doesn't have his family support. He doesn't have his wife and children. 
I um, wonder if that's a wake up call. Like you're yeah. when you're in the middle of create, you know, doing all these things and living this kind of life, and you're running around like a fucking lunatic yeah. like this. And then everybody finds out and you lose everything. Is that a wake-up call? Like, that you were the one that was that guy? I mean, that's why I think he's saying, like, I can't make up. Like, I mean, he supposedly was, like, remorseful. And, um, you know, he sold his house to have to pay uh, restitution to Seminole County and the Small Business Administration. And associates, like I said, of Greenberg have been arrested and charged in the real estate scheme and whatnot. But, again, I'm still waiting for Matt Gates. So I want to have empathy for this guy. But he didn't have empathy for the girls he was having sex with, nor for his own wife and kids, right? Nor for the people he's supposed to be serving. And when he was first arrested, he didn't show any remorse, right? Um, He kept, in fact, when he was arrested, he kept on with his criminal ways. Like, he didn't stop what he was doing, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, so he's like, he's either like incredibly reckless. And then I'm thinking, well, okay, he had the ADHD, Right, which which affects like your impulse and all of that, and then he was using drugs. Maybe you know, so when you're using drugs, like there is that you lack that develop. You know what I mean? Like maybe something happened in his brain with development. But at the end of the day, you're 32 years old. You made the conscious decision to do all the things that you've done. So you're like you're either like reckless or a buffoon or you're both. Like I don't know, and I want to feel bad, but I can't, I can't. I can't feel bad for him. No, he put too many people's lives in danger. Yeah, making asking girls to take drugs and paying them like that. That's a thing. Yeah, like it's one thing if a girl signs up to like go on a date with right. you and like maybe fuck and you or whatever. Dope them out. But like you giving them drugs and like that's, that's taking that's... A, resp- a level of responsibility. And then, you know, I'm sorry, I. I I've seen teenage girls before, especially now, and I always think they're 20 and they're 18 or yeah. whatever. And I'm, yeah. And it's not a thing where it's like, oh, that's okay. You can still have sex with them. No. It's just, you know when girls are young. Yes. You of course. know when they're young. Give me a break. And also, why why baby sweet baby angels if you're 18? Why, please. I please. Know. Please, God. I I know everybody wants to like claim their, like take power and, yeah. and like, claim their sexuality and all of that stuff. Like, I get it. But my God, please, you, uh, even it's if the dangerous. guy's paying you to yeah, take it's drugs, dangerous. it's like, you don't it's know what, what you're doing to, you're putting well, your you life know, in someone else's well, fucking you know, hands. Like, they could be like, hey, it's ecstasy, and who the hell knows what yeah, they're and, or they could, Or the and guy, they really or that awful fucking guy, I think mm. it was in Ohio or wherever that the guy was a judge, and he was bringing them to the basement and yeah, locking them up uh, or like tying them up and doing all kinds of, like abusing uh, their bodies. Like, yeah. we don't know who these people are. No. Please, God, please, I I beg of you to protect yourselves. Right, or, like, I just wish that we could offer more protection and safety for women who want it to make it legal so these guys can be held accountable right. make and that it could be legal. and that it could be in a place that's safe and yeah. like, you know what i mean but that cl- ch- finding that they're 18 uh, if that's the legal age we're doing this then no. uh, maybe it should be 21 maybe legal sex know. work at 21 yeah. I, I don't when you're a little more mature because they're when babies you're more mature to they, make that decision. they don't know what they're doing at yeah. 18 we're, we're fucking oh we're God. not cooked yet we're no. not fully cooked no well they say 25 is when like fully cooked yeah 25 sex yeah. work 25 legal Ugh. leave these leave these girls alone leave, leave their alone. bodies alone i know there's this there's yeah. this this weird fucking obsession with like young girls that's our and culture but our culture has cultivated that it's so fucking insane to me you know Ugh. these girls need to be protected yeah creeps oh motherfucker so basically right. with the with the i know this is a long episode but basically with scott maxwell when he started to write articles he worked for the orlando sentinel when he started to write articles about greenberg greenberg and a lot of his friends came after him and started right. accusing him of talking and then he actually illegally used po- accessing police records to find out information about scott maxwell and his wife and put out information about how they met at a strip club or something and like made up all these fucking oh. stories and the wife was and the wife could have pressed charges, Scott Maxwell's wife, and he's and she's like, I don't want to get involved with this. Yeah, no. Like just get leave, me out. just leave me alone. Let's like let's, let's not entertain oh. this because I don't want to keep this thing going. And uh, but you know the guy later on you know called Scott Maxwell to apologize, and Scott Maxwell was like, like please, I'll, I'll believe you when you stop telling people lies about all the things that you're doing. Right. And that he never heard from him again. Ugh. But, like, he tries to do... Anybody who publicly co- tries to come after him, he does the Trump thing where he attacks, 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 attacks. Yeah. And it's and it's all bullshit. Mm. And then this person, this innocent person, is left in the fucking public to defend themselves against this guy. It's wild. It's why a lot of people don't come out against Trump. Because they know that 
the wrath that they'll they'll get right. online and other places is so fucking bad. It's too much. Or you'll lose your oh, seat. And they have their crazy, crazy. Well, and they have their crazy babies. Yeah. All right. So Greenberg's attorney. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I thought sorry. you were done. Oh no no no. Sorry. I did have a couple more scenes. So Greenberg's attorney Fritz Scheller wants action taken on Gates. According to Adelson and Schmidt's New York Times article, Greenberg gave up the goods on Gates, and Scheller believes that the Fed should move forward with charging Gates. He said, "Quote: If the government is so concerned with general deterrence." then why hasn't it prosecuted the other individuals, including public figures, who were also involved in Greenberg's offenses? Indeed, Greenberg's plea agreement refers to the involvement of multiple co-conspirators, wow. including individuals involved in his sex offense. Wow. So if Greenberg has to pay the time, why aren't these other people? He's right. Maybe they are maybe they got more on Matt Gates and they want to pile it all together. Oh, I hope. All yeah. right, so some points of interest. Um, one of his failed businesses I thought was funny um, he tried to copy the Howard Stern show, and it failed mis- miserably. Like, he wanted to be, like, a shock jock. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, loser. Another thing I thought was hilarious is that Greenberg's ex-wife, Abby Greenberg, appeared in a video for Matt Gates, that famous, the infamous rap video where Gates is called The Chosen One. It's, like, this ridiculous... What? There's, like, this, or- there's this Orlando rapper, this, like, white dude, who made this whole, like video like pro oh, Matt Gates. It's so funny. Oh my but god. But she and I I just found it weird that she's in this video after all the shit went down with what? her. What? <laughs> so Gates is pretty much implicated, so why would she? But I found out that she's sort of a politico of her own right. Oh, god. And um Another click moron. Orlando uh uh Mike DeForest of Click Orlando noted that she leads the quote or not quote but the suburban Republican women's club. All right. I no longer have any sort of sympathy uh, for you. And then uh, he tried to implement, uh, I thought this was funny too, he wanted to implement a Bitcoin payment system in the tax collector's office, oh my which he God. said was, quote, sort of the future and where everything is going, according to Ben Miller's GovTech article. And uh, surprise, surprise, and I have a picture of it, Greenberg also has ties to our favorite local, Roger Stone. Oh! I have a great picture where it's, uh, it's a selfie of him. Gates, Gates and uh, Roger Stone together. Wow. Like, t- there are the three little douchebags all in a row. Like, rub-a-dub-dub, three douches in a in a tub. But you know what? Like, <laughs> can't you guys, you know what would be the best thing for y'all to do? Take um, all this business of, like, schmoo, like, all the shit you like to do and get away from government. Yeah, do it somewhere like, else. Go, go somewhere yeah. else. Find a way to become famous in another way. They can. And stay away from lawmakers because we need y'all to be upstanding fucking citizens who actually give a fuck about us and aren't going to use your office to benefit yourself. Just take it somewhere else. Why is it in public spot like elected officials is where you want to make your fame? Fuck, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. It's all stupid. All right, let's get out of here. It's so fucking long. Yeah. Oh, wait, is that it? That's it. All right, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.